there guys, uh, Alex here, um, back again for video number two in a couple of days. Um, some of you might know that I did a video yesterday um, and uploaded it, um, uh, showing you some recent finds. Um, as I mentioned, it's been a very, very long spell away from YouTube, you know, not posting anything. Uh, I haven't posted anything since, uh, well, before yesterday I hadn't posted anything since uh, right around Christmas. So it's been a, a long spell away, and uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I want to kind of jump back on the bandwagon, start posting videos again on a more regular basis. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen the first video, um, go and check it out, uh, Vinyl Update 16, I'll put a link up here. Um, so go and watch that one. Um, but I'm just going to continue on showing you some finds. Um, I got through about half of them yesterday, um, but I've got yeah four more to show you, so I'm going to go ahead and fire through these quite quickly. Um, I was going to do this yesterday, but to be honest, I was just feeling so under the weather, um, so low down, um, that I just, you know, didn't feel like it, so, um, you know, I'm just going to do it today. I'm still feeling a little bit low, but, you know, I'll go ahead and do it. Anyway, um, playing in the background, as some of you may have picked up on, is uh, Tubular Bells by uh, Mike Oldfield, uh, released in 1973 on uh, Virgin, I think, Virgin Records. Um, or Mercury, Virgin or Mercury, I was researching this album earlier. Um, but yeah, released in 1973, uh, one of the kind of pioneering uh, prog rock albums. Um, you know, I've heard many of you guys talk about it, ranting and raving about it. Um, I think Derek was one that sticks in my mind, is a, is a big fan of this, um, this album and this artist. Um, I don't really know anything more about Mike Oldfield, um, I don't have any of his other albums, um, but this is surely, you know, a great one. Um, and I think definitely an essential um, if you're into into this kind of spacey, you know, proggy, you know, prog music. Um, definitely pick it up. So that's what's playing, and uh, I'll jump right into these finds. Starting off with uh, a real gem, actually, and uh, continuing on from yesterday. I'm still in the kind of Christmas present stage, I guess. And uh, this one here was actually given to me by my brother. Um, Quite impressively, actually, I, I I told him about this record that I wanted it, and impressively, he kind of sought it out himself. Um, went to a record store in uh, a town uh, about 20 minutes from where I live and uh, managed to find it. So, pretty impressed with him for for that, and uh, you know, very very happy to have this. Um, the album is Bill Callahan Apocalypse, uh, released last year. I think somewhere you know, maybe around. June, July time. I'm not entirely sure. It could have been earlier or later than that, but um, yeah, um, got this for Christmas. Um, but I actually had a version of it before that. I had a version on my iPod, um, which I downloaded sometime. Well, after I the first thing I heard, the first time I heard about this album was through Anthony Fantano, um, who, as some of you might know, runs uh, the Needle Drop on YouTube, um, one of the most popular um, kind of reviewing channels. Um, he reviews all kinds of music, mostly kind of indie stuff, but also some more popular kind of mainstream artists as well. And he does an amazing job. Um, you know, I try and keep up with all of his reviews and uh, he reviewed this um, sometime in the middle of last year and uh, gave it a good review. Um, I think he gave it a good review. He gave it a decent review anyway. He didn't, he didn't give it 10 out of 10 or anything, but he, uh, you know, he said it was worth picking up and uh, if I'm honest, you know, uh, it was mainly the, the, the album cover um, that caught my attention. I know some of you guys have said that, you know, an album cover can be um, a deciding influence on whether you buy a record or not. I know it probably shouldn't be, but it, it does kind of creep into the um, the psychology of a record collector, for sure. And, uh, yeah, the, the front cover just really you know caught my imagination, and uh, I immediately just wanted to hear hear what the record sounded like. And uh, absolutely, you know, blown away by this, um, I have to say. <clears throat> I think uh, it was Dan in Canada, perhaps, who uh, put this in his top 10 albums of 2011, uh, when he did that back of the, uh, the back end of last year. And uh, I think fully, fully deserved, um, because this is an absolutely incredible release. Um, he was mentioning how, you know, it was amazing to him how he hadn't heard more about Bill Callahan before this, before this album. Um, because here is an artist who has an outstanding back catalogue of, of work 
going back, I think, to the maybe early 90s or, or maybe even earlier. Um, not entirely sure about that, but yeah, he certainly goes back away. And uh, this is one of his, you know, obviously his latest release. And uh, and it's just incredible music. Um, I could, I'd say kind of, if I was to label it, I'd say kind of pure and simple Americana. Um, just music that really paints a picture um, in your mind of, uh, of uh, kind of, I, I don't want to say cliche, but kind of cliche American, um, you know, um, paraphernalia. I don't know what the word is, but yeah, just uh, just pure Americana, and it's it's just really decent, solid music. Um, incredible tracks on here. Um, Drover, Baby's Breath, even the titles just just paint pictures and uh, make you want to listen to the record. Um, America's probably my favourite song. It's it's you know quite comical, um, satirical um, song, pointing fun at, at various things. Um, but you know, pretty much from start to finish, this is a very decent record. And if you haven't got this, at least pick up a copy, uh, a digital copy, because you know you'll. I don't think you'll be let down. Um, but that's Apocalypse. Stoked to get that one. Uh, moving on. Another new release, actually. This one came out, uh, I think, maybe November or December um, in 2011. And uh, from an artist which uh, I hadn't really kind of discovered properly before. Um, I was familiar with some of her work, but this was really my first, uh, my first venture into, her, into one of her actual albums. And uh, the artist is Kate Bush, and this is uh, 50 Words for Snow, um, as I say, released. Um, obviously, by the title, you can you can tell that it was released uh, sometime this winter. I think, as I say, back in November, December, um, somewhere around that time. And uh, I picked it up just after it was released, um, maybe just after Christmas. And uh, again, tremendously impressed with this. Um, after listening to some more of her work, um, after after picking this up, um, I I feel like I'm really quite kind of on the fence with her. Kind of very hot and cold. Um, some of her work just blows me away like uh, Withering Heights and all that early, you know, the, the early albums, I can't remember exactly what those first, that first album was called, but I really, really like that album. Um, you know, she's just so fresh, so young, um, her voice is just incredibly unique. Um, granted, you can't tell what she's saying half of the time, but, you know, nonetheless, it's still, um, intriguing music that, that keeps your full attention um, and yeah at first album I think I listened to the first two albums and uh, enjoyed them both immensely um, and then I moved on to some of the 80s and 90s work uh, I think I listened to uh, a couple of those albums and uh, just really couldn't get into them uh, to me uh, a few listens to to even understand some of the songs I was just completely cold um, with with those albums and uh, and this is kind of somewhere in the middle of those two. I mean, I'm not crazy about this. There's no songs that stand out in my head as being spectacular or anything. Um, no catchy tunes, but it's just really mellow, mellow music. Um, and just kind of does what it says on the tin. I mean, it's the album's called 50 Words for Snow. And uh, there's actually a song called 50 Words for Snow on this, uh, where I think Stephen Fry um, reads out... Uh, you know, obviously different words for snow uh, in different languages, and uh, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Um, a little bit kind of uh, gimmicky and corny, I guess some people would say, um, but it's, uh, you know, I liked it, and uh, this is definitely an album that I, I would recommend you check out. Um, but yeah, this is uh, a really nice pressing as well. Okay, final two finds. I'm gonna fire through these quite quickly. Um, an absolute classic next, we've got, um, sorry, The Velvet Underground and Nico, um, by The Velvet Underground and Nico, um, <laughs> released back in 1967, um, I'm sure everyone in the community has at least heard of this record, if not heard it, I mean, one of the most iconic and famous albums of, of all time, um, as I say, released back in 1967, um, and yeah, just really happy to have a copy of this, um, at long last. Um, I have a CD copy which I just play the hell out of and I've uh, been looking for a copy on vinyl for a while. Um, this isn't the Peelable Banana um, cover, um, which is kind of disappointing. And it's got some, you know, 
label damage on there, um, which is annoying. Um, but I'm just happy to have a copy at last, and I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll end up getting another one at some stage. Um, <laughs> I'll look for the uh, maybe for an original or something. But yeah, I'm not going to talk about this record. I have done before, um, but you know, if you haven't heard this, then <laughs> um, you know you have to hear it. It's it's one of the greatest albums of all time, in my opinion. So it's that one. Um, and moving on to the final album, um, this is a strange one. Um, not one I was familiar with, um, and uh, you know, not one I've listened to uh, many times, I have to say. Um, but my mum brought this home for me. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, my mum looks out for records for me. Obviously she knows that I'm a, uh, an avid collector now of vinyl, and uh, you know, I'm trying to build up my collection. And she, she, you know, she likes to surprise me with, uh, with the old record from time to time. Um, so thanks very much, Mum. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is an interesting one. Um, it's called "The Damned," uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and the first thing that struck me about this is I absolutely bloody hate the album cover. Um, as you can see there, it's just just horrible. It feels really tacky, really cheap, cheaply produced, should I say? Um, and it just turned me off completely. Um, it goes back to the thing I was saying with uh, uh, Apocalypse. I mean, uh, you can tell a lot about what the music's going to be like, I sometimes find, um, just by looking at the album cover. And, uh, you know, this is one that I, I couldn't really tell what the music was going to be like, but I was immediately turned off by this album cover, um, which is kind of a strange, um, you know, you, you could say shallow thing to do, but, you know, it's just... Uh, it's just first impressions, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is a, uh, a punk rock album um, from, I think, 1977 or 78. It's numbered, um, I think, 8,904. You probably can't see up there, but... Yeah, uh, I played this for, I think, twice and uh, enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't incredible. Um, I, I, again, I'm quite naive when it comes to talking about punk music. Um, I've really only been exposed to The Clash, The Sex Pistols and, you know, The Ramones and, you know, those, those uh, you know, really massive bands. Um, but yeah, this is, this is decent. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys know anything about this that you can, you can sh shed some light on it because I really don't know anything whatsoever about this band. Um, but yeah, the, the inner sleeves are quite cool. They've got like a uh, hand-drawn timelines, I guess you could say. Um, sorry, my screen just went off, so sorry if it's a bit dark. Um, of like different carnations of the band, different um, stages of their um, their career, and how the band's kind of changed over time, which is kind of interesting. Um, but not one I'd recommend you pick up. I'm just kind of happy that I have it in my collection. And uh, as I said, if you guys can shed some light on on this band for me, that would be incredible. Um, as always. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the final find. And uh, that's it for this video, guys. Um, that's all the finds I have to show right now. Um, I'm very, very short of money. In fact, I'm pretty much skinned at the moment, um, if I'm quite honest. So uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of buying activity going on um, in the next few weeks. I'm just going to kind of let my, let my wallet recover and, uh, you know, see how much money I have maybe a uh, few weeks down the line and uh, you know maybe buy some records then but um, yeah in the meantime I'm gonna try and you know as I say get back into the swing of making more videos um, I want to talk about some Bob Dylan related stuff um, I was just been watching Eat the Document for about the hundredth time um, uh, which is documenting his 66 world tour and uh, I'm just absolutely fascinated by by that tour and in fact that whole period of Dylan's career so I want to maybe review this um, maybe if you guys would like to see that then let me know in the comments um, and maybe don't look back as well from 1965 um, and anything else that you want me to do um, just let me know because I'm looking for ideas right now um, but yeah uh, apart from that thanks for watching guys and uh, see you next time